In the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. A pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment. The voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy, bounded by the Milky Way, and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, a very, very warm welcome to you, um, and so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, you're listening to KCR Radio, obviously, and we've got a great physical medium, uh, Kai Mugger, I hope I've pronounced that right, um, with us tonight, and he's going to be talking about physical mediumship. Um, physical mediumship started uh, a long time ago, and we're going back to the sort of Victorian Edwardian area where it was most prominent um with uh, good physical mediumship it is the way forward because it can bring evidence um unparalleled really uh because you can see talk to interact with um and be touched by your loved ones so they do physically appear and there's an awful lot of evidence uh, for showing that this is is real and works and i've experienced it myself um Having been to several physical mediumship um, uh, events. Now, um, uh, Kai, Kai is 35 years of age and he's German and he's now studying at the physical phenomena of mysticism and parapsychology. And he has been holding seances since he was 15. And uh, this has been all kinds of experimental um, stuff. His uh, tradition is to intercommunicate with worlds of spirit, and this is um, as old as mankind. So again, you know, we have lots of evidence uh, throughout history of people um, appearing. And if you're connected uh, to the Bible or into the Bible, you will know, obviously, of Jesus having appeared um, afterwards. And uh, when he talks about um, coming back, um, he was talking about coming back through physical mediumship so again lots and lots of evidence uh, in all kinds of different different ways um he had an invitation to experience physical mediumship when he was 12 years of age and this triggered his um uh, out of body experiences and his communication with spirit entities since early childhood and um Okay, so um, um, he's been doing this for a long, long time, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Kai. Hi, Kai. How are you? Yes, hi, Leo. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for having us, and um, yeah, great to be here. Uh, it's fantastic. It really is my privilege um, uh, to, to have you here. So um, for those that may not have heard of physical mediumship, um, uh, just give us a run through of... Um, how how it first appeared to you, your first experiences, and how you realized um, that you had this wonderful gift as well, and how that showed itself. Yeah, um, actually, it came very, very natural towards me. I experienced as a 12 years of age young boy um, a poltergeist case, so spiritual forces that break into our three-dimensional world very roughly and um, destroying and ruinous and I was flabbergasted and stunned by what I was seeing and witnessing over four months. It was not in my household. It happened in the household of my closest and best school friends at that time. And at these times, it was usual that you was overnighting at your friend's house. And because um, they were living in a very specific area, the father was a photographer, they were living in a very 
um, a, a huge environment where, where we boys could play around. And it, it was usual to meet there and to share there the weekends mm. and even amongst the week. And um, somewhere at that time, when I was 12 years of age, suddenly uh, these occurrences began there. And it was a, cl a classical poltergeist case, uh, as we know it, from uh, the first starting forms of um, disturbances up to um, terrible events and yeah. most disturbing interactions uh, with that unseen power. And um, after four months, the family was fleeing, uh, was leaving our city. Yeah. And the following three years, be between my 12th and 15th year of age, I did nearly nothing else but to look and search for books at these times you still had to order them at libraries around germany and they were sent to me um very very old books at these times i was reading all the material the german early parapsychology had produced like uh, Richer, Aksakov, yeah. Schrank Notzing, Grunewald, and so forth. And when I was 15, it is a tradition in our family to get the boys onto a boarding school. My father was there, my grandfather was there, and the boarding school was the perfect environment, me, as you might imagine. Yeah. Um, every, every Tuesday, when the teachers had their sports evening, I founded a group that actually was sitting every Tuesday for one and a half years. These were school comrades. They were as young as me, a little bit older, a little bit uh, younger. And it came totally natural towards us. It yeah. happened from the beginning. It started with our first sitting. And that's the way how it always was in all the circles that I founded uh, during my lifetime. And um, so I had a very, very natural and it, it was uh, only later that uh, I realized my own role within it. Uh, previously, I referred more to it as a group-related form of energetic interaction or interconnection until I realized that uh, my deep involvement since my uh, even earlier childhood, because I was a, nat a natural out-of-body experien experiencer, yeah. Since I was approximately four or five years of age and my experiences uh, were, were melting together, so to speak. And um, yes, and so the, the, the experimental groups came and went and then came the Felix Circle. Yes, and the Felix Circle was a sparehead for the revival of physical mediumship within the Western society. The Skoll Group um, had uh, triggered this revival of this form of spirit tradition in the Western tradition of uh, spirit communication. And uh, one more thing, Leo, please. We always need to be aware that this Western form of spiritualism is only... Uh, mirroring uh, all these ancient tradition usually coming from in indigenous environments um, in in which uh, intercommunication with spirits was was going on and it was 1850 um, specifically 1848 when the western hemisphere when the first world when the first american settlers actually were massively addressed by the spirit world and they reminded the western hemisphere so to speak and said mm -hmm. don't go on to your journey into materialism and into uh, this new uh, era without us and um, that was the beginning of the western form 
of spirit communication, the Western tradition of spirit communication. And um, the Felix Circle uh, was an outcome of the revival movement in the 1990s of this specific form of dealing with the spirit world. Yeah, it's um, a bit because we often refer to um, uh, sort of ancient tribes as um, third world, don't we, of being well behind. Um, but spiritually, they are so much more connected than most of us are um, during our daily lives. Uh, for them, it is something natural. Um, it is some... Uh, Uh, it is a way of communicating and getting advice, etc. And, you, you know, we can look at the Aborigines. Um, uh, we can look in New Zealand. We can look it in the States for, uh, uh, you know, the Native uh, American Indians and uh, Indian, Druids, yes. etc. Um, so uh, we have this strange way because we think we're so advanced in the West of saying, well, they are they're tribal, um, their age is old, they're out of date, but they're so much more connected, aren't they? Absolutely. And this is a, this is a kind of colonial attitude, yes, mm. that is uh, uh, absolutely uh, uh, not right, uh, this, this attitude. Actually, as, as you said, um, the indigenous folks or the tribes' tradition to handle the spirit world, to share every day's, uh, every day's life uh, with the spirits, specifically the Northern American Indians, um, we, you still have the opportunity to um, attend or to uh, be in, in, in uh, ceremonies mm -hmm. which actually have the exact same uh, energetic dynamics and environment is uh, which is brought up there which we are encountering in the physical seances and to 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 uh, say it r right out in physical seances you deal with the spirit world on a physical plane what in a mental environment would be a message maybe from a medium on stage is in a physical and in a physical mediumship environment uh, a touch or a kiss or a hug uh, spirit hands that materialize spirit hands that transport objects through the room The spirit hands that come close and touch and caress you, spirit entities that manifest and even materialize to different degrees and um, interact with you. Yeah, and I, I think that's something very special. Um, I used to have out-of-body experiences when I was very young. Um, I took that as very normal, very natural. And there were times when, when I was levitated um, within the house. And uh, uh, I just, um, like yourself, I just found it natural. It was something wonderful. Uh, there was never any doubt in my mind that it existed. But, but I know for a lot of people... Because of uh, movies, um, TV shows, because mm. of skeptics, you know, there can sometimes be this very sort of um, negative air um, around. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think if, if we go back to our own roots, you know, um, um, many thousands of years ago, then then we we had this tribal instinct ourselves i think modern man and modern living um whilst it has some advantages um it's kind of um bleached all of that out of us although i i understand it's returning now and it's becoming much stronger um but uh, uh, uh modern living as it was kind of took us away from those natural feelings which is a shame um I have attended several um, sciences, physical sciences myself. And uh, um, just to let listeners know, when, when um, um, spirit materializes, or as you say, move objects around, or even when they touch you, 
Um, sometimes they can be cool, but actually um, the hands, they're warm, aren't they? They're very solid. Uh, they can be strong, can't they? Oh, yes, they are. And, um, I mean, we have very, very many different descriptions of the experiences people had in our seances, mm -hmm. from from cold to damp to warm. Uh, so that very, very much depends uh, on who is actually observing it. But mm -hmm. uh, one more time referring to what you were saying, uh, uh, to keep it straight, to the, the contact with the spirits is the one of the main factors, if not the main factor of the metaphysical development of uh, the the human evolution or the uh, the metaphysical development or evolution of the human mind yes so it's yeah. uh, it's it's deeply written in all our dna and i uh, very much believe that every single human being could have a very strong connection to the spirit world if not the outside world would distract the people and let the people solely focus on worldly things, worldly uh, uh, ac activities and so forth. But basically, I believe everybody has a deep, deep connection uh, to these unseen environments. Yeah, um, I, I firmly believe that myself. Well, I say believe, I know, uh, and I expect you know as well. Um, I know that that's correct. Uh, I know we all have that link because, after all, we come from spirit ourselves. And and sometimes, as you say, that the, there comes a point when we are so firmly grounded um, on earth in this place where we are. And we let, um, <clears throat> to some extent, ego run riot and we get so grounded with it that we cut ourselves off completely. Um, I, I know from 2012, the vibration of Earth has shifted. And I personally think there are so many more people now um, that, that believe in this or have had um, experiences of spirit on one level or another um, that we are in. Um, s certainly for the size of population, we're in a very unique position now, aren't we, of having more access to spirit on on every level. Yeah, I mean, specifically the, the English society, of course, because they have implemented spiritualism as an alternative form of religion. We need to know that in Germany that did not happen and that is the reason that because out of the out of the traditions the different modi operandi of course were born and that is one of the reasons why we have a different modus operandi uh, inside of the seance room the the germans had not that religious approach they more had an experimental approach to it and these thousands of churches and this regular um, form of encounter uh, with the spirit world. This is, I believe, s specifically something um, which is a privilege for the British, for the for the English. Mm. Don't you don't you think? Um, I, I do. Um, uh, people sometimes ask me um, whether I'm religious. And I quite surprised them by saying, uh, no, I don't consider <laughs> yes. myself religious at all. Mm -hmm. I would hope I'm spiritual. Um, and absolutely, I, I think, absolutely. You know, I, I think we, with spiritualism, it's a double-edged sword. Um, it should be something that's natural to us. Uh, we would hope we can be spiritual to everyone that we meet. But I think we, like other religions, when man has... Um, made uh, rules when he has um, uh, made an organization mm. uh, in a religious sense and added man-made rules it, it detracts something from it because it can only very be much less, very much yes yeah than what the creative energy is, has created so um, and as we know we, with all kinds of religions um, things do go wrong um, mm. And that's that's quite a shame. So um, I think 
in one sense, it's nice that people have grouped together and said, well, you know, this this is a religion. Um, but I, I do think it detracts from it, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and not only does it, it, it does distract, it is restricting mm-hmm. the, the, the mediumship scene very, very much. Um, yeah. f- 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 because um, the, the, the topics and issues, the controlling organizations uh, which are uh, reigning the the scene they are restricting and they are actually telling you very very detailed what they want you to do and what they don't want you to do for example it is more or less forbidden to work spiritually with let's say extraterrestrial spiritual mm. Uh, compounds yes you you when you are unlucky you are thrown out of the um, organization of the, of the, <laughs> yeah yeah indeed indeed you have you have even to sign you have even to sign some of the organizations and the, the biggest schools the most influential schools let you sign uh, that you are not uh, working with extraterrestrials that you are only working for the proof of survival and that's very interesting this spiritual movement turns to circle solely around the question of survival. That's not very typical for a spiritual movement. Usually it's about (laughs) epiphany and enlightenment. Uh, uh, Dr. Leo Rigby has just written uh, a new book, Angels in the Trenches, and it is meticulously describing how actually the First World War was turning the spiritual movement of uh, 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 the the um, later heydays of spiritualism mm. into a movement that is more or less circling around the question for a proof or th- around the proof of survival. That's very interesting. And many believe that has to be reviewed. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's um, thank you for bringing that up because I've not heard of that book, but it's certainly something um, that, that I will buy. Um, I, I think again, um, you're absolutely correct. It is a great shame because we try and restrict it and we make rules. You know, the seven um, principles of spiritualism that came through Emma Harding, um, uh, uh, Emma Harding Britain, w- were handed down through spirit directly. And of course, we've now got an organization which is trying to rewrite those rules and uh, different ways of looking at it. And it, it is that control. I mean, spiritualism itself is meant to free us. It's meant to make us free oh, so that yes. we can understand life. And it's it's the complete opposite, really, what they're doing is saying, right, well, we've now got these rules, you know. Um, so um, it is a very, very great shame uh, that that's happening. Um, we, we've got a minute or so um, before we go into to a break. So um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at some of these um, other things uh, um, th- that we touched on <coughs> after the break. But it, but it is interesting, you know. Uh, it, it's a little bit like a modern invention, isn't it? You know, we discover something. We, 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 we find out how to manipulate it. And then man being man just weaponizes it. You know, think that'll make a great mm-hmm. gun. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. we've kind of done that with religion. So um, we're just we're going to be um, straight back in a moment, and uh, we're talking to Kai and Mugger, and we'll be right back after this. This is the voice of spirit. Your connection to the other side. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it, and in order to experience it. You have to experience it in your imagination. Explore with us by calling 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors. was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring. Why? Anyone? 
Anyone? Anyone? Because they were huddled around the fire listening to the KCOR Digital Radio Network, home for the holiday special. Brilliant! Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, Christmas Eve, it's commercial-free holiday music. Yes! This Christmas music! It's joyful and triumphant. Our gift to you from the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Toxins are everywhere, from the air we breathe to the food we eat and the water we drink. In a world where 80,000 known toxins and heavy metals threaten our very existence, how are you going to protect yourself and your loved ones? Introducing Pure Body Extra Strength, the world's first collodial zeolite that helps trap and remove toxins as well as heavy metals from your body that are messing with your memory, clarity, sleep, and focus. Don't just take our word for it or the testimonials from our thousands of happy customers. Check out the hundreds of articles and case studies on the National Institute of Health website proving zeolite's powerful ability to remove toxins. For a limited time, listeners to KCOR will receive 10% off their first order. To get started, go to trypurebody.com and enter promo code Radio 10. Again, that's trypurebody.com. Toxic junk is all around us, but now you can take back control of your health and protect yourself by detoxing with Pure Body Extra Strength. You'll be on your way to sleeping better, thinking more clearly, and feeling more energetic. Go to trypurebody.com right now and get started today. Looking for a radio show like no other? We need something uh, brand new. Then tune into the KCOR Digital Radio Network, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and get ready for The Quantum Shift. A great shift of consciousness is sweeping across the Earth. Are you ready for the dimensional shift? It is amazing, is it not? The Quantum Shift, Quantum Shift. hosted by Dr. Sam Muggsy, Kent Dunn, and Drake Bailey. Be part of the fifth dimensional reality where consciousness prevails and the universal law of one is the only true reality. The Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Live Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. KCOR Las Vegas. All the time. Of course I listen. <laughs> I listen all day. It's the best music. KCOR, the new underground source for news, talk, and music at KCORradio.com. Tell your friends. Email them or Facebook them or Twitter them. Hey, are we done here? Because I'm losing my buzz. Happy Holidays, this is Erica Lukes with UFO Classified, and I would like to wish you and your loved ones a very safe and happy holiday season. Welcome back to The Voice of Spirit, your connection to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at KCORradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide Colors, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the Voice of Spirit, Leo Bonomo. Hi, very, very warm welcome back. We're talking to Kai Mugger, um, an exceptional uh, physical medium, and we're talking about part of his life and what he's doing. We're going to be covering all kinds of subjects connected to that um, this evening. Um, If you do want to call in with some questions, then do um, use that number that we've just given you. Uh, We've got a caller here called August, and she has a a question for us. So, hi, August. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm really well. I'm really well, thank you. Uh, this is Kai, and this is August. Um, ask, ask um, Hey, August. Uh, nice, nice to meet you. Hi, August. Hello, Kai. It's good to hear your voice. It's, um, I just happened to sort of spontaneously listen 
to your radio show. And so good to hear your voice and hear the two of you begin to explore some ideas about religion and spirituality and and the rising of spirit on the planet. And when you had mentioned some of the things you mentioned reminded me of something that I had heard in one of Kai's physical mediumship sittings quite a few years ago, actually, from a, a higher friend in spirit. It was a very charged um, uh, direct voice experience. And I just want, and I had some notes. I actually made some notes later on. I have a very good recall. And I just wanted to share a little bit of what the spirit said and see what, how it strikes the two of you. Um, so they were talking about coming down to our organized plane and how difficult it is, how they have to grade their energy down to do that. Um, but this person said, suddenly got very serious. And he said, so I'm quoting now, that means every idea, every image you make previously, even the image of an afterlife, these are earthly images. These are earthly ideas. They follow the laws of your physical and psychical structure. So you are hindering yourself to get higher information by projecting such earthly ideas into your mediumistic universe. You will only receive what you project. Get rid of those ideas and open yourself freely and be ready to receive what valuable information might come from these planes. And don't follow institutionalized dogma as long as you want to evolve personally. If you want to be part of an institutionalized church, yes, then follow their dogma. If you want to evolve, then open your mind. Oh yes, that's very interesting that you, that you um, made these notes, August. Uh, great to 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 hear this message again, and it's absolutely completely true, of course. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it's something, um, August, uh, as we say, that we were we were just beginning to touch on, uh, because uh, when when you when man organises something, it feels it has to have rules and bylaws, and it it, it just complicates mm -hmm. matters. Um, um, and, and so he actually finishes by saying, "So now get rid of all these earthly ideas; they cannot fit a higher organised existence." Mm. Absolutely, we ha we have to be aware that all our imaginations about an afterlife can only be un untrue or not real because when we actually change the dimensional environment in which we are living, our perception is totally changing. And the terms that today describe what we might believe is true, they may not have even any more a meaning. So um, our ideas actually block ourselves from intuitive or symbolic forms of 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 um, learning or feeling or sensing what the afterlife actually might be. Yeah. Um, uh August, um, uh, when spirit communicate with us um, on the higher levels, um, there is no um, language um, or descriptive sentences that, that we would understand. So you're quite right. And what that spirit said is quite right is it has to be degraded um, to a level where um, even on mental mediumship, three quarters of the work is done by the by the guides and the communicators by lowering their vibration and we can maybe if we're lucky come up a quarter so there is literally that meeting of minds um it's also limited by the communicator in their experience of where they are and where they've progressed to um in a sense it's almost like speaking a different language and we have um, a smattering of some sentences and a smattering of understanding. So the communication itself can be um, very limited based on our own experience, um, the guides uh, uh, as well. So um, it, it's because people look at things as being quite straightforward, quite easy. This is what you do. This is what happens. Um, and, and, you know, they make it very black and white. Um, it's not. It's not at all. And um, uh, 
I agree with what you've hinted at, you know, that some organisations just want to make rules and what they do. I was saying to Kai in the break that, that what spirit want is freedom. It frees us to have this information. And what we do is, we, you, you know, we, as a human race, we, we grab some of it and we want to put boundaries around it. And uh, that's quite destructive. Well, it's this, this same spirit. Um, mm. It was the first time I ever heard someone in spirit get so serious. Usually there's a lot of just good humor and levity, but this was just like, like stop messing around kind of language. And the spirit yeah. also said, forget everything that was told to you. Make yourself empty. Make yourself mm. a real vessel for whatever comes from there because it will be of value. Yeah. Well, you know, th there are um, preconceptions that we all have until we learn better. And I was having a discussion with someone this week um, ab about trans mediumship. And uh, they were talking about th this um, person who was supposed to be a very, very um, good trans medium. Um, but they were making statements or, or statements were coming through them that were quite obvious, um, a bias and uh, bias towards that medium's views. And for me, it, it, it's it's something to, to aspire to, to get past all that and be open, completely empty vessel. Um, but um, it shows that there was some leakage, really, of, of um, that medium's bias into the conversation. And for me, that would have tainted that whole experience. So it, it's quite right that we have to empty ourselves and uh, going back to what Kai said you know there is so much distraction in this world you know um, we, we're living quite strangely in a world of um, better communication but what we're actually doing is communicating less on a relevant level you know it's fine to text and all this but we're distracted from life by texting etc absolutely my my Yes, August. Please. My question, my question for Kai then, is, um, in, in terms of thinking of how far back this started for you as a as a child, and things came naturally, and then meeting other kids of like mind and spirit, and and experimenting and playing with each other. In terms of where is this all going? Like, do you see a trajectory at this point from your experience in terms of uh, physical mediumship. Um, I, I think so, or we, or we think so. We believe it is clearly going towards enlightenment and consciousness expanding. It is um, actually about the vibration of the natural of, of, of human beings nature. It has to do, um, you know, I, I need to, to, um, refer to the very complex worldview. Our spirit communicators are communicating towards us and how they do interconnect things. That's very, very complex and difficult. And they put us into a holistical, multidimensional environment and they come forward with uh, different claims with a partially uh, very surprising um it's about consciousness expanding. I believe spirit communication is basically for the seeker and the spiritual scholar, not so very necessarily for science or scientific investigation. It has very much to do with the specific experience that is happening in the seance room when the people are confronted with these wonders and phenomena the spirit entities are capable to install in our environment that seem to activate something within us that um, reconnects us on a plane where connection actually is going more and more loose as Leo just has referred to and um, actually it is 
about the quality of our existence. It is about the quality of what uh, uh, um, the quality of the assets of the human being, what the human being was given in its universal or multiversal in this multiversal and environment and how we have to reactivate it and if we reactivate it hopefully sooner than later uh, this uh, shift may hopefully come this shift in consciousness that hopefully will enable us to inhabit this planet not to, uh, 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 and not to destroy it the message of our spirit is actually a, a message about survival as well but it is about the survival of mankind and the survival of uh, the planet and the survival of the uncountable multi-dimensional planes which are interconnected with our existence and that Every single impulse, thought, dream, word, action or activity we are uh, um, doing is actually massively influencing not only our own environment, but um, on, a, on, a, on a vast basis, these multidimensional planes which are affected by us and what is then changed in their environment is re-affecting us. So the spirits actually claim that we shall uh, refer to what they call what the true meaning of life is. And they claim that the true meaning of life is that we human beings are a species and they regularly refer to the fact that um, out there in the multiverse are uncountable forms of beings. But not many are born in the high, fr in the high frequent uh, 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 frequency of, of love. Uh, one of the one of the highest frequency the consciousness actually can be in and they say the meaning of life is to turn everything that we are as i said every impulse every thought every activity we shall turn back into an asset of love into a compound of love inspired by love inspired by forgiveness it is by far not a cliche in the meantime one one could even suspect this love business is a cliche or it is outdated no it is not in the end it is the answer for for these big, big questions we are standing in front of. So, um, the related to our spirit communication, the outlook is clearly a message towards um, a more new age related uh, uh, message or uh, assets. And we are very survival of the soul of course plays a role as well in our seances but it is not only about the question will I survive do I survive how is the afterlife looking like no it is more about the greater good for humanity and so forth and I say that with all the respect to the mediums that work for the grieving and that work for the mothers and fathers that have lost their children and for the people that have their loved ones but I believe the answer we won't find when we circle around the question how the afterlife is looking like we only will find an answer when we find uh, ways and forms how we deal with one another. Mm -hmm. And when we are lucky, this will bring us towards when, when we can inspire more and more people all around the world. And this is what the spirits do. They say, um, what, what we are doing here in Kai seances is happening all around the world at, at many places where a union of communicating spirits which are interested in the uh, development and 
um, in the prevention of the human good, um, that they are all around the world working with us and at us human beings. And at one certain point in time, this consciousness or this informational field will be dense enough, then enough information has been brought into it, and then this consciousness field will shift into a higher form of itself. This is following then universal law. Complex systems tend to shift into higher forms or to develop into higher forms of itself. So um, the, in, the question about uh, the survival of the ego and the survival of the soul is interesting, of course, and it can help a lot, the grieving, of course, but it won't solve the big problems of the societies we have. Don't you think? Mm. Yeah, I, I certainly do. Um, um, what, what do you think of that, August? That was a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to take in. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's it's, it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, August, have you heard of somebody called Leslie Flint, who was also a physical medium but direct voice? Um, yes, of course. You, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Because again, there's a lot of information that comes through there. Um, my guy told me several um, years ago. Uh, his exact words are. In 20 to 30 years, this place will be completely different. By this place, he means Earth. And what he meant by that mm. was that we will have reached a spiritual level where uh, very few people would question this connection. Um, very p few people would be um, um, skeptical or acting against um, this great love that, that encompasses us and and so life would be very different um politician you know spiritual people um would be politicians there would be a whole whole different energy um, um that surrounds us um s some time ago um uh, i believe that um physical mediumship w would uh, shift from and should shift from being um, uh, dark seance based to um, light seance based so that um, spirit can materialize um, in light and we would have the basic same seance but in light and um, I have been to um, and say in circle actually for about a year um, with a medium that does work um, in the light and we had some great things coming forward and um, I think the evolution from dark to light would be much more convincing um, and I don't mean any disrespect to, to Kai at all I've got great respects for him but I think at some point if we can shift from dark to light that will help to convince um, a lot more people and so you'd get this influx um of this energy and new vibration that that will make everybody understand and i uh, i gave out um a challenge um uh, some months ago on air that um if there are um groups that can work um in the light physical mediums that can work in the light then it would be an idea hopefully to maybe do um, seance once a month with this um, televised um, and certain safeguards in place so that you would perhaps have um, a clock um, running at hundreds of seconds so it would be um, difficult to to cut and paste and to fake or anything um, but I think um, if we can get that to happen and moreover, we can get that to happen live. I mean, obviously there are wonderful films about, you know, all kinds of sci-fi. There's all kinds of ways of manipulating this. Um, but I think if we can bring spirit 
um, to the front in this way, it would have a massive impact on how people um, connect with these things because uh, religions, um, I believe, are very divisive, you know, and we need to take the religious aspect out of, out of spirit and connect in that way. We absolutely have to talk about that after the shortly the break. upcoming break. Mm. Uh, because I believe I, ha I have a lot of, of, of contradictory information in regards to that, and I would okay. like to meticulously display it to you. Only shortly, for 30 years, I am observing the physical mediumship scene, and you are really very lucky when you could, uh, for one year, experience a physical medium actually working in the light. And I would be very interested what uh, actually has happened here. But for 30 years, mm. many groups came forward and claimed that they would develop the things into the light. None of these groups, none of these groups have succeeded. And I believe there are reasons, therefore. It has specifically to do how spirits can act in our environment, it has to do a lot with the observer effect, how perception is actually interfering with the spirit energy. It is not necessarily about darkness. It is mm. about perception and how our yeah. perception is actually creating our three-dimensional environment. Um, but um, we need to expand that after the break, also in uh, uh, in historical uh, side and uh, and also in global side. So, um, how how were the traditions by now, mm -hmm. and what actually can an outlook be? By the way, we have developed a lot of things into the light. When you have worked long enough, you can bring mm -hmm. things into the light. But the darkness, I believe will stay a, ve a very, very necessary um, basis yeah. for what is going on. Yeah, um, fantastic. Um, I'd just like to thank you, August, for um, uh, your contribution. It, it's been wonderful. And uh, do call in again. We cover lots and lots of subjects. So um, is there any last thing you want to say, August, um, before we go into the break? Very quickly. Um, just that... What we're talking about, too, is that people, in, in my experience, actually have to experience these things firsthand in order to gain an yep. experiential understanding. Not just to read about it or to hear us talk about it, but they yep. have to experience it in ways that go beyond the language that you're talking about right. that spirit Absolutely. can't use. And once they experience it, it becomes knowledge, and once it becomes knowledge, then things begin to change for people. Fantastic. We've got to go. We'll be straight back after this. been listening to Leo Bonomo, Leo Bonomo, the host of The Voice of Spirit, live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news. Now, broadcasting in digital HD radio. In the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. A pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment, the voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy, bounded by the Milky Way, 
and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Very, very warm welcome back. Um, I'd like to thank again August for calling in. Uh, we're talking to uh, um, a wonderful physical medium, uh, Kai Mugger, and uh, welcome back, Kai. Um, we thank were talking. You. Uh, bless you. Uh, we were talking um, in the break, weren't we, about um, past lives and the skull experiment and the alien connection that's there. And, um, y- you know, uh, when you consider um, how many um, millions of uh, habitable Earths in our galaxy alone, and there are billions and billions and billions of galaxies uh, that that we can we think we can see, um, it, it's quite ludicrous to say there are no other life forms, um, and um, and so we we know from spirit, although they tend um, certainly um, with Leslie Flint, um, they tend not to discuss other life forms very much, um, but it. it Again, it's a natural thing, isn't it? You know, man's very arrogant to say, like, um, in all this wonderful existence, we're the only people. And I've said many, many times, you know, if you think that way and you accept or you think that that's true, why do we treat the earth so badly and each other? You know, it's it's not logical, is it? No, um, absolutely. And it is not only what is referring to our own galaxy. I mean, we are experiencing what can be going on on the soul spiritual plane on which we are contacting the spirits we are in contact with. So mm-hmm. there's not only our own galaxy, so, but there are these planes of existence that maybe have denser or not so dense forms of existence and existences, but that may be interconnected um, with us on this spiritual plane so it is absolutely vast and we can and we we are not by far uh, anyhow able to overlook that but one thing is clear the the spirit worlds actually are full of with all we can imagine in the end and all we cannot imagine. We may encounter there the spirits of planets like the Gaia spirit. Mm. We will be able to encounter there the spirits of winds and of trees and of rivers, the spirits of extraterrestrials and angels and all these things. And I believe when we are looking for higher forms of information, we really should not restrict our uh, the contact we have established here mm-hmm. and simply focus around uh, human and env- human compounds actually when we only address the deceased we are more or less solely circling around human compounds and isn't yeah. that something we wanted to get beyond? <laughs> I, I would say so. I mean, many people um, see um, nature spirits, um, you know, and we have various names for various forms, hobgoblins, fairies, um, you know, as you say, um, of course. Uh, the spirit of the wind. And so people um, uh, see them, feel them, uh, uh, uh interact with them so on one level we kind of accept that um here on earth as something possibly um earth connected only um but uh, you're absolutely correct you know there are so many things to discover when we pass over ourselves um such as these entities and and these energies and and of course the the billions and billions of of other life forms Mm -hmm. um that are out there for, Indeed, for me, and, and, and they are probably uh, contactable, yes? Um, I, I would say nothing's impossible. Um, yes, yes. You know, um, um, and as for time, um, 
it's it's a man-made thing you, you know uh, we have um invented something and it has been necessary because you know night day seasons we plant our crops so we we have that um buried in our psyche if you like there's time um but that itself can be quite destructive you know because uh, lots of people are in the rat race you know we need to be at work at this time we need to do this we need to do that but mm. it is only a man-made thing um my guide explained to me um some years ago that if, if we look at time um uh, as a sphere and we can look f for earth purposes we we can point to any one country or region and say that's a point that i lived in um uh, and then if we draw a line through that and say well that line represents time for us so we can pick a country and we can go along any evolutionary part of that time and um incarnate into that so you know we talk about us as being modern um but we could incarnate into a time thousands of years in the future um thousands of years back and so it was a very effective way because uh, I can be a bit thick, um, but it was a very effective way of, of um, giving me an explanation of oh, very you know, true, very true. Mm. And this is something else we should talk about. It is mm. uh, the concept of the here and now and the afterlife that is uh, still promoted. Yeah. This is actually a view on two things that is coming from the early 1900s and it is coming from the understanding of the humankind or of the understanding of the humans of that time. They just had understood the connections that the, the, the Newton worldview had explained to us uh, of, of cause and result and um, coming from that idea, uh, the concepts of an afterlife actually were building up that we have this life here and uh, as a result, so to speak, there is an, an afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, I believe simply what the embodied spirit what the human beings have learned in the last 150 years, all these many complex, complex concepts about reality, we are predestined to understand much more complex information coming from the spirit world. A medium in the 19th century uh, would have never understood. And... Yep. Um, I very much believe, and it, actually this is what we just have discussed with, with August, that these very human ideas about how an afterlife is looking like, I mean, specifically within spiritualism, I, I am encountering ideas that in the spirit world you can play spirit golf in the afternoon <laughs> and in the evening you drink yeah. a sip of spirit red wine and so forth. Mm. Yeah. People believe the spirit world is looking exactly like this world. It's only more beautiful. Mm. I mean, this I don't want to, to hurt feelings of nobody, mm. but this is naive in, in, in my view. And this is naive in regards to what our spirits are explaining, how very complex the things are uh, interconnected with. What do yeah. you think about these very um, sim simple ideas? Well, um, um, you know, playing golf, having a drink, um, uh, golf is no fun. If you can hit a hole in <laughs> one every time, you strike the ball. It's something you would get very bored with. Um, I think there are landing stages which are very similar to Earth, but that's because we need to acclimatize and we need to remember other lives and, of course, our life as we had it in spirit and unburden some of the um, experiences that we've had here. So I think there is a landing place. Um, but, yeah, you know, spirit often refer to beautiful planes or worlds 
that have no words to describe them because our language is so limited. Uh, and I think, um, again, you're right. You know, um, scientists um, know there's a, at least 90% of the brain, they have no idea what it does. And I think it, it is, part of its purpose is for this acceptance of this knowledge of working in different ways you know um uh, uh, i'm not sure if you believe in jesus or not i think jesus was um a very highly evolved spirit a medium and healer um Absolutely. but what he said as well um in the old-fashioned uh wording was these things i do ye shall do also and what he was trying to explain is in a sense um there was nothing wonderful nothing magical about him if we have that understanding we can do those things um because you know it, it's 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 only matter it's only substance it's only a table it's only a chair but it's made up of molecules and it's made up of energy that we can manipulate um i i think we, we would go thousand years into the future before we can physically do that but he was basically saying you know it's it's not as it appears it, it's not really magical mm -hmm. it's something we can all do so um yeah 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 and what uh, what what our spirits are uh, contributing mm. here oh, is uh, that that they claim that actually the the whole physical environment how we are looking at it and describing it that this is actually an illusion that is created mm. by our brain and by the perceptions our brain are uh, offering us during our life forms here on earth. Yeah. Um, it has specifically to do how this perception system is bringing all things together and only because of that these things are there. So molecules are only existing from a certain viewpoint, so to speak. The whole physical environment is only existing from a certain viewpoint. And when we have learned that actually not only the physical environment is an illusion, but that the body is an illusion as well, an illusion created by perception, you know, um, because uh, our perception is is what what I see, I can touch, what I ca what I can touch and take into my hand, I can smell it at. Mm. So um, it is a complete it is a complete environment our perception is offering us, but it mm. is only there that way because our perception is grabbing it. Uh, mm here on a certain plane um but that the the that the truth is actually paul once has said uh, life is a dream within a dream mm. and uh, actually that seems to be true and when we have understood that that is the case we can actually do the things that lay beyond the healer can put his hands into the body of a patient mm. as if there is no body. Yeah. Healing of cancer can happen as if there is no mutated tissue of, of the body and so forth. I believe we need to be aware that our environment and the whole world, all what we know, is only there because our perception, our brain, and our brain is the vessel of consciousness to enable us to lead that individual life here on earth. And probably consciousness is um, creating uh, unbelievable life forms on different forms on, and on different planes of physical existence and our life form is one of these specific life forms. Consciousness is creating on different planes of physical existence. Mm. Basically, yeah. probably in the end, the only thing that is there is awareness, consciousness. Consciousness mm. existing 
outside the human body. Uh, absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons that this is this place, um, Earth, is very real to us is because we're, we're at similar vibrations. Um, and again, you know, a table um, like this feels very real feels very solid um but of course we know from from physics that actually if you go down to sort of an atomic level that, that there's a, a hundred times more space than there is atoms you know, Indeed. Atoms. so yeah so it's uh, uh and I, I i think you're right if we start to look at things in that way we can perhaps slowly outgrow um that perception that what we are seeing is real spirit often um uh, mention this a as a dream as you've said um you, you know and um uh, i often refer to the afterlife as the real life because this is very dreamlike you know um yes we can hear we can speak we can talk we can feel mm -hmm. um but it, it's only um uh the perception that fits uh, th this point, you, you know, um, when we are um, in spirit, everything is much more vivid. It's much more alive. So uh, they kind of refer to this as sleeping in a sense. We're so cut off, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is, we should talk about these ideas and we are, we are, we are still at that point um that we uh, uh, could question in regards to isn't that isn't this a human image mm. what we have here of an afterlife and let me quickly once more refer to uh, rigby's book about what were the motives that turned spiritualism into a survivalism uh, movement um it was Uh, actually the, the fear of death it was yeah. it was in the of course people had lost many many people and that has triggered this change within the movement because in the uh, before the second world war and uh, excuse me before the first world war and even during the first world war the spiritual concepts were much much wider and broader that uh, then uh, what they became then um and we need to look that not our own hopes are very strongly influencing what we are picking out uh, of the information that is available let's for example look at near-death experiences mm -hmm. within near-death experiences we are usually hearing that the these people are encountering what you just have referred to a very vivid environment and um Uh, we are uh, taken by our loved ones from our dying bed or from mm. angel-like light beings and we are brought into a very, very beautiful environment and we choose to prefer this information and that's why it is only we are hearing not about the 30% of very, very negative experiences mm people yeah. had in the near-death environment and um, I mean this is this is a, 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 f um, a war within spiritualism for yeah. a long time because uh, what we are coming down to here is the question is there negativity in the spirit world or not And there is a very strong spiritualistic notion that tells us or that wants us to believe that the spirit world is a purely beautiful environment and 
yeah, it 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 tends to the golf image and the spirit yeah. red wine image. But but they can mm. play spirit football if you <laughs> like, like <laughs> yeah. prefer spirit football. So um, we need to be very very careful what is created, how we uh, are used to turn our awareness towards to. Um, what our hopes are and how very much these hopes are influencing. I mean, our fear of death has influenced the whole spiritualistic movement that mediumistic or spiritualistic effort is only evaluated when you are circling around the proof of survival. And it is even restricted by the most um, prominent uh, s uh, schools and, and organizations. And, um, and we need to be uh, uh, very, very careful here what, what might be real and what not. Many, many things are uh, constructed by our hopes and fears. Mm. I think one of the most destructive things um, about religion, uh, uh, no pun intended, is that it it puts the fear of God into people. And that's just manipulation. You know, my religion is right. Um, if you don't like it or you're going to go against it, you're going to be cast into hell, you, you know, whatever it might be. And, and we, we get we get. Um, we literally, uh, as a as a race, uh, have, have had the fear of God put into us. Um, I think the other thing's interesting. Something else that I've argued with the SNU about quite publicly is they don't believe that there's any place where bad people go. Um, mm. And I said exactly. exactly the same thing that you know um, we're we're immediately the same. We pass over, and if we happen to have been a serial killer we're not going to end up in the same place um, as other people. We are going to gravitate to a place we've made for ourselves, which our vibration suits, and we'll find ourselves with a whole world full of serial killers. You know, it doesn't change. But as you say, um, but Leo, Leo, isn't, isn't, isn't that a very human idea as well? That serial uh -huh. killers end in the place where, only serial killers are. I believe that the spirit world is a massive morphogenetical informational field mm. where everything that human beings have been in the past are, are in the present and will be in the future. Every thought, every dream, every activity of every human being is existing in this huge morphogenetical field and this field actually has created our universe and that's why all these things are existing here and it it's it is it is our uh, effort now to create to change this morphogenetic field mm -hmm. to bring in more positive information that some yeah. when this morphogenetic field is maybe creating a universe that is looking more beautiful than ours. Yeah, I, I agree with you entirely. Um, we're just going to go into a break. So um, if you're listening, if you want to call in, if you have any questions, um, we're here and we'll be straight back after the break. This is the voice of spirit, your connection to the other side. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it. And in order to experience it, you have to experience it in your imagination. Explore with us by calling 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Uh, give us a call now. Worldwide Colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors. Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my God! Santa here? 
I know him. Hi, it's Jeremy Scott from Into the Paranormal on Saturday nights from the cold, dark depths of a secret dungeon somewhere deep in the remote Pacific Northwest. Merry Christmas from the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Alien Deceptions, a suspenseful sci-fi romance thriller by Tina Marie, featuring the tantalizing Erica Jones and the mysterious Russell Hamilton. An out-of-this-world book of fiction, based on years of document facts and files the government does not want you to know about, at least not yet. Alien Deceptions by Tina Marie, available now at Amazon.com. Or get a signed copy at tinamarieentertainment.com. Get your copy now. Monday nights are about to become hauntingly good. As Reverend Sean Whittington possesses the airwaves with Vegas Supernatural. Vegas Supernatural. Tune in every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for Vegas Supernatural. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. There's a war raging between good and evil. The question is, which side are you fighting on? Tune in Monday nights as Reverend Sean Whittington sets the new standard for paranormal radio with some of the most influential personalities in the world today. Vegas Supernatural, hosted by Reverend Sean Whittington. Every Monday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Even the devil doesn't want you to hear. Here's what happened on the last episode of Three Guys No Ties. Uh, close. I, I I don't know what's more dumbass, him losing his license or that this was on the front page of a major news outlet. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a huge story, and of course we're going to cover it's, here on Three Guys No Ties. It's time. not, but it, it looks ridiculous, and so you want and you want to look. You clicked on it, right? We got it, don't Click we? Bait. I saw the same thing. I, I as soon as I saw it on your computer screen, I wanted to see what that story was. So it's even newspapers are doing clickbait. <laughs> Three guys, no ties. Wednesday nights, seven to nine Pacific, on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Why? Anyone? 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 Because they were huddled around the fire listening to the KCOR Digital Radio Network Home for the Holiday Special. Brilliant! Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, Christmas Eve, it's commercial free holiday music. Yes! This Christmas music! It's joyful and triumphant. Our gift to you from the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Ow! Welcome back to the Voice of Spirit, your connection to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at kcorradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the voice of spirit, Leo Bonomo. Hi, um, again a very warm welcome back in this uh, last sector. Um, I'm talking to uh, um, Kai Muga and um, uh, honestly, I mean, we could talk for a week straight, but um, some of the things that we want to sort of um, go over is the Phoenix Circle, Skeptics, a little bit about history and spirit teams. So um, um, talk away, Kai. I would I would love to refer to um, the issue darkness and mm. uh, in which degree darkness 
uh, plays an important role in the songs room environment and what it does to our perception and yeah. uh, what it does enable actually for these uh, spirit potentials, these spirit entities that do um, in the following enter um, the seance room. I would um, refer to the f um, to this uh, fact in a way. I, I would like to start um, first with something parapsychological and mm. historical, because many people do claim, and this is f simply historically false. They claim that in the heydays of spiritualism, uh, all the seances. Uh, have been in light and that all the things have happened then in light and that is factually f f f uh, false as it can be um, parapsychology actually counts four or five so-called daylight mediums and all the thousands of mediums that came afterwards were darkness mediums and they were coined darkness mediums these these four physical mediums um, that have partially worked in the light was uh, where Daniel Douglas Hume yeah. and he was the first physical medium um, the young America was confronted with and he was of course um, confronting a society that was uh, not at all um, prepared for uh, what Daniel Douglas Hume was presenting to them. Um, e. Eusapia Palladino uh, was able partially to let tables levitate in, in uh, better lighted conditions. Carlos Mirabelli, yeah. the unbelievable a Brazilian physical medium, and he was an a true exception, like the other, like the other three or four were also true exceptions. Indridi Indridason, the famous Icelandic medium, um, he was plagued outside of his seances by. Uh, a poltergeist like um, disturbances and they were partially going on in light as well so Florence Cook maybe with her catchy king uh, materialization that was also seen in a in a very uh, in a relatively good light so and all the other mediums Helen Duncan and uh, all these many many other names for Jack Webber and uh, all the many names we know Ina Nielsen and um, Rudy Schneider they all have worked with a minimum of light. And shall I tell you, when I was for the first time visiting um, a physical seance of the Northern American Indians oh. of, of, of the Lakota Sioux mm. tribe coming from the Great Plains uh, in the Midwest, um, all the tribes in the end had... Uh, ceremonies in which the spirit world was manifesting, was materializing. And uh, n not only me, many, many people have uh, seen the materializations because f short flashes of light to reveal them, um, touch these materializations. But when we were preparing with these medicine men the, the rooms for the ceremony, not this, not the smallest dot of light was allowed to intrude the room because they knew that light was or is disintegrating spirit matter, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So now let me let me refer now from from another uh, uh, stance, from another perspective. This problem: Why do we people are afraid of the dark? Why Why aren't we afraid of the sunlight? We are afraid of the dark because during our thousand years of experiences, 
in the dark and not in the light. Things came towards us that frightened us because we have not understood that. Yeah. yeah. The oldest word we have out of the Greek and Latin regarding the supernatural, these supernatural things is the word occult, O-C-C-U-L-T, occult. And people believe occult means, uh, translated, means translated mysterious or misunderstood or non-understood. But when we translate the word occult, which is the oldest word we have in our word compound, when we translate it correctly, occult says that what comes from darkness. Yeah. Why have two or three year old children, why do they suddenly develop the fear uh, of darkness and want mm. their parents to keep a door open or let them look into the cupboards or under the bed? Because, yeah. they, because usually their memory of their own uh, their own memory of, of darkened environment should be the memory of the motherly womb, mm. uh, a, a place where it is very safe, where it is very comfortable. Why do they suddenly develop the fear of darkness? It is because in their DNA something is very much older than their own and more powerful than their own memory of the motherly womb, it is exactly the information I am referring to. Now look at, look at this darkness thing from a very modern and a very scientific perspective. Because um, for a long time the, the, the people believed um, that infrared is, is uh, uh, interfering with ectoplasm and that it is actually the darkness itself that is needed. Mm -hmm. Since since we are confronted with the phenomena of quantum physics, we have very much enhanced our view onto the material world. For example, we know that co uh, perception is interfering with matter and is interfering with the way how the physical environment is developing or forming itself or building itself. It's the so-called observer effect. Yeah. You, I, I know you, you have heard of it. Yes, and yes. spirit tells us that it is exactly that what it is about. Mm. That the, as we just were talking about the illusion of the physical world and this illusion is created, for us it is not an illusion. No. It is an illusion from a wider stance from when we take, when we would be able to, to, to step a step back, then we could look at it as the spirits do and see it as an illusion. For us, it is our very concrete three-dimensional world. And it is created by 90% by the perception of our eyes, by what we see. The spirits claim when... Uh, let's say um, uh, uh, five people are sitting in a room and watching the room and everybody is seeing the same. The spirits claim when we, um, when we uh, take three of these five people, their visual perception yeah. that the stability of this three-dimensional room would decline because we are our, as I said, perception creates even our physical environment. It is in the end an illusion for us. It is concrete. It is, it is a, a matter, but actually it is not. And what it is actually about in the seances is that the distortion or the blockage of perception is declining or making the three-dimensional world destabilize, uh, de uh, un unsta unstable, mm. so to speak. Mm. And in that unstableness, the spirit entities throw their anchor and mm. are able to actually to step into our room. We have 
experienced that so many times that they really put their foot into our, that we hear them walking, that we yeah, even saw them walking, uh, as you know, how far our experiments actually have gone. So that's why I asked you, what have you actually, because you was referring to a circle you have set for one year, and that yeah. in that circle the things <clears throat> have happened in light. And I, I just asked you in the pause, what have you actually witnessed? And um, it was interesting to see that at least a part of in the end only was visible on on recorded video right yeah 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 and and that the other percep and or the other phenomena you was referring to that that was more or less a blur in your own vision or in your own perception i mean that is not what we refer to to physical mediumship Physical mediumship actually has that has has that unquestioned objectivity for everybody present and for everybody experience ex experienceable uh, in the same way as if a human being an, an additional human being would be in the room. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I, I, because I know there is that truth movement that only wants physical mediumship to happen if everything would be um, uh, would be happening in the in the light. You know why why infrared is also not working uh, because no. it is a tool of our perception, and you have for surely for sure heard of the term elusivity mm. that. Uh, when spirits are in the environment, um, the the ways and forms, how we detect them, that these are elusive. The moment we turn our camera onto it, they do not happen anymore. Uh, or the moment we turn our camera onto it, the camera breaks. Or the camera has a malfunction or something like that. Yeah. So parapsychologists from the beginning on have reported that... Um, the phenomena um, are behaving as if they would uh, uh, particularly um, trying to avoid that we get a grip onto them, that we observe them or that we film them, that we record them. This broken device thing is 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 actually in the paras parapsychological field research it is very very re well known that um cameras and audio recorders and so forth have yeah. malfunctioned the moment they could have um depicted uh, our spirit friends so yeah. one one last thing to to make it to make it round when it, when we want to experimentally get in contact physically with mm. with these spirit potentials with these spirit entities then we need to create an environment which is natural for them that yeah. means at least one corner in the room has to stay dark at yeah. least for a certain time during the sales it has to stay dark and i mean i have in the felix circle we have developed until today we founded the felix circle in 2003 you can then develop things from the dark into the light and we have developed the most intensive things into the light for example Apportation in red light, objects that appear in front of your eyes in red light, not in the dark. Yeah. Materialization, ectoplasmic extrusion and materialization. You can watch, you can look at the ectoplasm as it is breathing and forming. It is a living compound. It is not a bed sheet or a towel that somebody yeah. has hidden at the body and is then presenting. It mm. is... A, a lively, it is the lively spirit matter, if you wish so, and you can observe it in our seances, how it turns into different forms. It is usually hands, faces, heads, torsos, embryonic forms. All that is happening in short sequences of light, as long as they are 
uh, inter interluded. No, what's the right word? So darkness, um, yeah, red light, darkness. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, I believe these organizations and the truth movement, actually, they don't want physical mediumship to happen. I know that there was a case with a very, uh, at that time, respected healer yeah. and physical medium that was filmed mm -hmm. In, uh, uh, in in with, with infrared. I mean, um, when we are dealing with these uh, tr trans states and so forth, this guy was actually looted in, into a trap. And we don't know what the spirits knew, and we don't know um, because his guides claim uh, we, we, we could not have come up because of the infrared, because of that visual uh, access the, the camera has provided. And that's why we have freed the mediums from the binds. And, you know, in the, in the 1900s, this was called transfiguration. Helen Duncan was permanently seen freed from her binds. That was... That was not a big deal because in the end she was back into her binds, and yeah. all the and all the 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 uh, the seals and so forth. Everything yeah. was intact. So I know that this um, thing had triggered the so-called truth movement, but they should have the knowledge what is part of history. They should have the knowledge, what, what I have, that uh, physical mediumship and the ways and forms how spirit do physically enter our environment, that there is a strong connection to darkness. The information yeah. I have just shared with you is widely available. Mm -hmm. So I believe we are again confronted here with an established institution that actually wants to avoid a new branch that was believed to be extincted and that actually um, could not distract own scholars uh, towards it. And now this branch is back and we find out that this branch has... Um, uh, 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 historical is historically justified as uh, the these mental parts of spiritualism are, and uh, these institutions are now providing techniques to keep that new new old branch uh, very small and little. I mean, in the one last word. During the 80s and 90s, when the Noah's Ark home circle uh, 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 um, connection was being formed over England, physical circles yeah. all over England, uh, the Noah's Ark Society's new generation of mediums like Colin Fry, Stuart Alexander and so forth were yeah. coming up. The most leading institution, the, the, the most well-known school of these institutions were negating that. I believe they have negated it until a few years ago, until suddenly their own tutors you found in their vitas had yeah. started to turn into physical mediums themselves, yeah. interestingly. So yeah. there it, is that a, was all money based, wasn't it? You know, yeah, um, yeah, we can't yeah. do the physical stuff. We'll, we'll stick with the mental. That's what we're earning money at. Yeah, so, I don't want it. I, I did not want to say <laughs> it so clear. So thank you very no, that's much. Fine. That's fine. I, I'm never afraid of speaking up. I've got a bit of a reputation of um, speaking up a little <laughs> too see. much. Um, yes. But I, I've explained um, to other people as well, you know, um, um, ab about um, the light and the dark as far as um, in spirit as well. And I made exactly the same um, comment that, you know, what would um, a 10-month-year-old baby 
what experience w- would it have to be frightened of the dark? It has no experience of the world, but yet they have nightmares, you know, as we might explain. Um, so I think that's an excellent point um, that you've put, you know, um, about the dark and that there is that, I suppose, primeval fear for, for lots of people. Mm. Um, yeah. So because um, because of that specific connection between darkness and mm. the supernatural world, yeah. and yeah. the supernatural world is the world <clears throat> of spirit. A- absolutely. Um, we've got about three minutes to go. Um, I'd like to give out the URL. So if anyone's interested, I'm sure there are lots of people interested. Um, you would go to uh, Felix Circle. That's F E L I X C I R C L E, all one word. Felix Circle dot blogspots, all one word dot com um and of course you can find um kai on facebook as well so if you want to interact in that way um i'm sure that um kai would be very pleased to to um to have that contact um this is such a vast subject isn't it oh yes you know um, and these two hours (coughs) went quickly (laughs) They always do. It's amazing. You know, I sometimes get guests and they say, well, I'll do half hour. <clears throat> and um, and uh, and they eventually stay two hours because it's just like gone. Yeah, and it, yeah um, absolutely. But I, I think a great deal of that is down to the guests and, um, you know, their knowledge and, and just the way that they come across. Um, it's been absolutely um, inspirational talking to you. Um, as always, I've learned something today. I learn something every day, uh, mostly that I don't know a lot, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's been very inspirational. So um, I'd like thank to you. thank you so, so much. Um, we You're must welcome. do a few more interviews because uh, as I said earlier, um, we could talk for weeks. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and there are so many highly interesting topics we still have to address, Leo. Um, as you know, as you know. There's a whole list that we were jotting down just before the show started. And it's like, <laughs> we've not even done a quarter of them. Um, it'll be fantastic. We will arrange some more um, interviews as and when you can. Um, but you're always welcome here. We've got to go. Thank God you bless. so much. God um, bless you God too. Bye. Bye-bye. And uh, that's the end of the show. Join us next week. You've been listening to Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. The host of The Voice of Spirit. Live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news.